Hello there, my name is Linda Jo Martin and I am known on booktube as the book lady and this is going to be my September wrap up, October TBR, and a life update. So, in September I finished reading Blindness by Jose Saramago and I did not like it at all, mainly because of the subject matter. I could say that the writer was really uh, talented However, why did he choose to write about something so horrible and dark? I don't know. I didn't like the book. I would not recommend it to anyone. And then after Blindness, I read um, New Kid, which is the 2020 Newbery Award winner. And it's a graphic novel. I've mentioned it on my other videos and really like that book recommend it to everyone. And then I did an audio reading of A Tree Grows in Brooklyn, which I have never read before. And I always thought it was a children's classic book, but as it turned out, it was more of a family saga and I would not recommend it for children. However, um, great book. Really, I'm glad I finally got around to reading it. So I have read parts of Leaves of Grass by Walt Whitman, and I am not a fan. And if anyone has anything positive to say about Walt Whitman's poetry and writing, please tell me, because right now I'm just not enjoying it as much as I wish I was. And I'm almost done with that long essay about how great poets are at the beginning of his Leaves of Grass 1855 edition. And I've read pretty much uh, maybe about half of the first poem, which is really long. Anyhow, uh, not a big fan. If you like Walt Whitman's work, please tell me why, so that I can think about that while I'm reading the rest. And then I've read half of Ladies in Gold, which is a Christian book. And I have been reading Lincoln and the Bardo. I've read a good piece of it, but I had to put it aside because banned book weeks have uh, banned book week happened at the end of September and the beginning of October. And during that week, for the Pop Sugar Reading Challenge, I had to read a banned book. So I chose a book that has been challenged in numerous school districts. It is the absolutely true diary of a part-time Indian, which is so amusing and in ways very cute and I like the main character and everything, but it has a lot of sexual content and if it was up to me, I would ban it. As it turned out, the school districts where it was challenged, uh, none of them decided to take it out of their library, so I don't know if it's really a banned book, but it showed up on the banned book lists because it had been challenged so many times. and. Uh, I have a lot more to say about that book because it takes place on the Spokane Indian Reservation in Washington and uh, the problems that they were having there as a tribe, I just don't identify with them much because, well, I live or lived in a town where half the population is Native American and they don't seem to be having the same kinds of problems. The problems described in the book are actually much worse, a very sad situation, but told with such humor that you really, uh, you care about the, the situation that's go going on and the main character. I think The Absolutely True Diary of a Part-Time Indian is a very good book but I can totally see why it has been challenged. And then, um, let's talk about crime and punishment. I was going to do the crime and punishment read along last month and this month. However, I was reading along and I started having nightmares about murder, which crime and punishment, I'm sure you know, is a book about murder. And I think because my home burned and I was going through some shock and trauma, I started having these nightmares about murder and I do not like my nightmares about anything. And I decided that I was going to have to DNF 
crime and punishment because of that. Because, you know, it's, it's one thing to read a challenging book, but it's another thing to have it enter your dreams and terrify you at night. And I just cannot have that happening. So crime and punishment got DNF'd. Sad to say, because I was really looking forward to reading it with the group. So um, I got done with all my audio books. I guess it was when I finished A Tree Grows in Brooklyn, which was an audio read. I started another audio book and chose Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine because it also was fitting another Pop Sugar Reading Challenge prompt for me. And at first I did not like Eleanor. I didn't like her attitude. I didn't like the way she thought. Uh, but then after a while I started liking her and I ended up really liking this novel and would recommend it to everyone. Uh, Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine. Great book. And then, of course, at the end of the month, uh, Band Book Week. So that's it for September. Now, in October, I will be finishing up some books. I will be finishing The Absolutely True uh, Diary of a Part-Time Indian. I will be finishing um, Leaves of Grass, hopefully. I will finish it. And then I started an audiobook of Cress, which is the third book in the uh, Lunar Chronicles. It seems like every year I've been reading one book out of that, and I'm not a big fan of YA series. I usually avoid them as much as I can, but they fit a Pop Sugar reading challenge prompt that comes up. And so, yeah, I have to read something about a cyborg, and where else am I going to find that? So, I'm reading Cress, and so there are two books that I thought were really appropriate for October, because it's supposed to be the month of, like, Halloween, which I do not celebrate, but the first one is uh, Lincoln and the Bardo, which is about people who are in the afterlife in the Bardo, which is a place where souls go to await uh, reincarnation, which I do not believe in reincarnation, but the book is so interesting because it's a different kind of format, and I just thought the premise was fascinating, and I wanted to know how the author handled it. So Lincoln and the Bardo is, I think, a perfect book for October. And another book that I'm going to be reading that is perfect for this month is Scary Stories for Young Foxes, which is a Newbery runner-up, uh, an honor book this year. Now I am doing a Newbery challenge with a group on Goodreads. So I'm going to be reading some other Newbery books. These are the ones that I have lined up to read. I don't know if I'll get to them this month, but I'll give it a try. Um, Aside from Scary Stories for Young Foxes, I also started Other Words for Home about the Syrian refugee. And I have on order from the library The Blue Sword, which is a fantasy. Good Masters, Sweet Ladies, which won the Newbery Medal a few years ago. Smoking the Cow Horse, which is one of the long ago, far away Newbery Medal winners. And I tried to read it once before and it was just horrible and I couldn't get into it. So I'm going to give it another try, try to get through that one. And then George Washington's World is also on the list. So that's everything that I've got planned for October reading. And turning my page in my book here, I've got a little book here that I'm reading out of. I just wrote myself some notes about things I might want to talk about in my life update. Let's try to make this fast. Okay. My home burned down. I heard that the fire finally got to my neighborhood at about 11 o'clock on the 8th. Uh, it started early in the morning, about 7.30. Probably burned my daughter's house at about 8.30 or 9 o'clock. She came, she was uh, one of the first people evacuated and she came to my home. And I lived across the street from my son. 
So when the fire finally hit our neighborhood at 11 o'clock, it burned his house first and a bunch of other houses on the other side of the street. And then it came across and it burned my house and my neighbor's homes and a lot of other people in our neighborhood lost their homes. And then there were some homes that survived. So fire, it's fickle and you never know what it's gonna do, but it, it did take my stuff away. I didn't care that much about the mobile home itself but I had a lot of my things that I had just moved into the mobile home and those were mostly burned. I didn't have much time to get out. I got some things. I got a lot more than some people. Some people had no warning at all because they were in town working and were not able to go home at all to get anything when the fire started because it moved very fast. It was a windy day. So, the first night I stayed in my van, because I have a bed in there, and the second night, um, on the 9th, I was given a hotel room by the Red Cross, and I am still in that hotel room, for which I am very, very grateful. It is a good place and a comfortable place to recover from the shock and trauma that this month has given me, because when you have uh, a loss like that, like all through the month you start remembering things that you lost and so you have to grieve for each specific thing that you remember that was lost in the fire and it's been a really difficult month because of that so um, the Red Cross has been feeding us three meals a day and I am just so overwhelmed and amazed by the generosity uh, the Red Cross workers actually are 90% volunteers and they work for two weeks at a time and then they go home again. And so they've been bringing us three meals a day. We get a hotel room to sleep in, mainly because of COVID. I think if it was any other year, they would put us like in a gymnasium and we'd have to sleep all together, uh, which would not work out well for me. <laughs> but I, uh, I really appreciate the hotel room that I've been given and just grateful that I have this place to start my recovery in. And then I've been given some gift cards. Uh, my daughter, one of my daughters sent me some money and also uh, the Happy Camp Fund, which I guess was United Way and some other people donated to this Happy Camp Fund. They donated quite a bit of money, so they were able to send out checks to each and every one of us who had lost our homes. And I have received some gift cards. I got one from the Salvation Army. I got some money at a revival I went to last weekend. I was not expecting that at all. I knew they were asking for donations for the Slater Fire. Uh, but the fact that they actually gave that directly was a big surprise to me. So very grateful, very, very grateful. And it's hard to accept charity, but when you realize that if you have a fire, you lose almost everything and there's a lot of things you have to replace. So I am very grateful to be able to have this money because then when I think of something I have to replace, I don't feel so bad about it. I think, okay, but I'm getting money, so I have the money to replace that item. So then I don't feel as bad. My son, my oldest son, not the one that lived next to me in Happy Camp, but the other one who lives in the San Francisco Bay Area sent me this beautiful hiking stick to replace the one that burned in the fire. It's still got the tag on it. And I love it, it's hickory wood. I think it's beautiful. Thank you, Joshua. And setting that down. Um, he also wants to buy me a couple of books, which I have decided which books I want. When I talked to him, I didn't know which books I wanted, but I have a couple in mind now that I would very much like to have replaced. And then I wanted to tell you, like, I have no plan for the future. <laughs> I have no idea where I'm going to be living. FEMA has not come through for us yet. We think it's probably gonna come through soon. I found out to get FEMA disaster assistance, 
the governor has to request it of the president, then the president has to sign it, which we all know he's been sick lately, so he hasn't gotten around to our disaster declaration yet. And then after that, they'll process that at FEMA and allow us to make applications. They may have some kind of housing plan for us that I have no idea what to expect. Um, I don't know if I'm going to go back to Happy Camp or if I'm going to live somewhere else. I just don't know at this point. So that's kind of still all up in the air. Uh, people keep telling me I should be writing about this, I should be journaling, and I have, I have a hard time doing that. I mean, I'm having a hard time doing my videos, and to write and even to do any artwork or anything has been very, very difficult for me this month. I've been going to the park almost every day. And what I understand is that I'm going to have to have some kind of temporary housing, uh, might be for a few years, because the process to getting your land back is very long and involved here in California. The Environmental Health Agency will have the land cleared. I don't even have to pay for that, which is really a blessing but they will clear off all the uh, rubble from your land and then let you go through the ashes to see if there's anything there that survived that you might want to keep. And then they're going to have to scrape everything off the top of the land and after they finish scraping it, uh, they're going to test it to see if there are any toxins. And so it's a very long involved hazmat kind of operation and I've heard that like in the Paradise Fire a couple years ago people just now are getting permission to rebuild so it may be a long time before I'm able to live on my land again while they're doing all that I cannot be on the land so if you don't go through all that then you don't ever get to have a building permit and it would really affect the, um, the property value and you might not ever be able to sell it because people wouldn't be able to build on it. So I have to go through it and looking for temporary housing in the meantime, probably with the help of FEMA, I am hoping that will happen. And if not, there's always the van. I could always make my van more habitable and able to live in that so those are options I don't know which direction I'm going yet and so just thought I'd share that with you because I know a lot of people probably want to know how the fire has affected my life and um, it was a big sudden change and a lot of things I lost however I am calling it an unburdening which means that a lot of things I was terribly attached to that I was having a hard time giving up, I had taken away from me very suddenly and maybe that's a good thing. Maybe I have with me the things that I need and the things that I didn't need are gone. Maybe that's the way it is. Anyhow, I think it's a good positive way to think of it and I'm just gonna move ahead and realize that if there's anything I needed, that it will reappear in my life some way, somehow. And yes, there are things that were irreplaceable that were lost in the fire. There were songs and stories that I had written that were lost in the fire. And I saved most of my journals, but why didn't I think of getting the boxes with my songs and stories? I don't know. It was just so crazy the last few minutes trying to get things and put them in the van and get ready and then it was suddenly like we're being evacuated. It's not a warning anymore. It's like, get out. So um, I could not find my cats when I was leaving. They had disappeared. I did not have cat carriers for them. I didn't know where they were, so I left without my cats. They were two outdoor cats that were uh, given to me along with the property that I bought last January. And I have found one of the cats, so I didn't find her. Somebody found her and took her to the cat shelter. 
so she's fine and the other cat that was with my two cats was also rescued and my other cat which is my companion cat has never been found yet so I'm feeling pretty bad about that uh, apparently when there are fires like this there are people that specialize in rescuing cats it's a major problem that there are a lot of animals left in the fire area and you would think that the cat would run away when it, there was heat or fire and apparently a lot of them did because they survived so i hope that my cat that hasn't been found also is out there somewhere and they say they get scared and they don't want to come to people they don't know so a lot of times they find cats that have been out there for a month or two and I can only hope that my other cat will show up so that's kind of how my month has been going and I guess I will end this I think it's gonna be a very long video and I'm sorry about that I, I like to keep them short but since I'm not doing very many of them then it all comes out in one video so thank you for listening. In case anybody got to the end of this video, thank you very much for listening, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.